Yeah, boy! Hit him with invitation sway. Come back to another video. Before we get into the main video, little PSA. Zach and I would love to introduce STEM Week to you guys. From this week onwards, each and every week, there's going to be a new product or product range being reduced over in STEM merch. This week, we got, to, to start everything off, we got a double pendulum going, which is nicely reduced over there. It's a new arrival and it's also now reduced over in STEM merch. First STEM week, check it out. Link in the description now for the main video. So recently I've looked through my very cringy first videos here on this channel, those were all in German and if you haven't checked them out already feel free to do so. Um, and I want to see if there were some videos among those which I have not yet translated into English. Most of them have been translated into English language but some of them did not yet. And yeah, you're going to see a few of those videos in the next time. And there was a really interesting one among those, namely the logarithm of negative numbers. So I start off with the logarithm of negative one and went over to the natural log of negative numbers in general, not only on the principal branch but also in general. And I thought that's kind of boring actually because we can generalize this even more and this is what we are going to do today. For example, we are going to take a look at a general case where we can have something like the logarithm to the base negative two of negative 5. What's the answer to that? We are going to see this at the end of the video. Now for some prerequisites and then we are going to dive into the complex plane, okay? So at first I want you guys to remember a little property of logarithm, so basically the, the way it has been first motivated. If we have a to the b of power being equal to some value c, okay, just simple exponentiation, you can find a whole playlist of this over on Flamble Maths too, okay, just saying, then the logarithm has the property that we can apply log base a on both sides, getting our exponent out on the other side. So if we were to use log base a on both sides, we are going to get that b is hence nothing but the log of base a of c. This is how the logarithm has been defined. This was the main motivation behind the logarithm to get an answer for the exponent. But we can actually go a step further because logarithms have some very nice properties and we can actually get a change of base going into the natural logarithm, which is important because the complex plane is later being defined as just an exponential function, okay, rotating around a little bit with some kind of magnitude and Natural log and E, they are kind of friends, okay, no, they are sworn enemies because they are inverses of each other, at least on the principal branch. So what we are going to do is we are going to apply the logarithm base E, so the natural log on both sides here, leaving us with log of A to the B of power being equal to the log of Z. And now this very nice property that the logarithm has, namely that we can track exponents to the outside as being just coefficients of the logarithm. Okay, this is good. Now we can divide both sides by log of a under the condition that's not equal to zero. So a must not be equal to zero, leaving us with b being equal to log of c over log of a. But we also know what b is. b is nothing but what we have here, meaning we can do a very nice change of base, okay, <laughs> not change of pace, change of base, meaning that the logarithm base e of c is hence nothing but the natural log of z, log of z, over the natural log of a. Okay, those were some prerequisites and now we are going to see how we can define for example the logarithm of a negative argument because we could have the situation that we have the log of base a of some negative argument meaning we are going to have a negative argument here, negative c, meaning we have to compute the natural log of negative c in some way of some negative number negative 5. And in the process, we are also going to find out what the logarithm of a negative base actually is, okay? Because it's just in here, in, in the formula already. Now for this, we are going to take a look at the complex plane. And there are several ways to derive something like this. And I'm going to show you one at first. And if there's some time left, I'm going to show you a second way of doing so. So at first, we are going to take a look at the logarithm of just some complex number z. Okay, for this we are going to jump, so this is the natural log right now, we are going to jump into the complex plane and we are going to see how complex numbers have been defined. I have made a whole series on complex numbers already, complex numbers but different, but now we are going to take a look at the standard definition of complex numbers. So a complex number can be interpreted as a vector in the complex plane, okay, so we have our i 
R axis here and the real axis here. And now you can basically do a tiny little bit of geometry in here. So what we can do, we can say that this part on our real axis that we are having here is nothing but the real part okay, of the complex number we are going to call it A and also the height of this triangle that we're having here we are going to call it B, this is the imaginary part of the complex number. And also there's some angle being in enclosed by the x-axis in our complex vector that we are having. We are going to call it phi. This is our argument, this is the so-called argument of a complex number and this is just our angle phi. And now we are going to go ahead and do some trigonometry. So at first our vector has a certain magnitude, a certain length. We are going to call this length r. And now we can say that for example the cosine of our angle phi, cosine of phi, is hence nothing but um, adjacent over hypotenuse, so a over r. And if our radius is non-zero, which we suppose it is, because um, otherwise this would just be zero, <laughs> wouldn't make any sense, then we can multiply both sides by r, leaving us overall with the real part of our complex number being equal to r times the cosine of phi. We can go through the same process. If we have the sine of phi, then this is going to be b over r multiplying both sides by r. We are going to get that r times the sine of phi is hence nothing but b. Now we have found out how we can express those in polar coordinates and if we take a look at the general complex number z it's going to be the following, it's just going to be the real part plus i times the imaginary part, this is just how they have been defined. Now we can plug those layers for a and b into here leaving us overall with r times the cosine of phi plus i times r times the sine of phi. Now you might notice that r is a common factor that we are going to have here so this is r times the cosine of phi plus i times the sine of phi. And I have made a video on that, several videos actually in complex numbers but different and regular way. You can actually derive that what we have here is nothing but the exponential function, the complex exponential function of e to the i phi. Okay, overall a complex number z can be expressed as r times e to the i phi. And those were just some simple prerequisites. Okay, if you knew everything of this then that's totally fine. Now we can go ahead and apply the logarithm, the complex valued logarithm, meaning it's a multivariable function, not a multivariable function but a multivalued function, a so-called mapping, multivalued function, to both sides of this equation. Leaving us overall with the natural log of a complex number z being hence nothing but the natural log of r times e to the i types the argument of our complex number. And our logarithm has a nice property that we can actually break this up. This is the logarithm of the magnitude plus the logarithm of e to the i phi. And you know this is the logarithm to the base e of e to the something, meaning it's just going to be the something in itself because this right here sends nothing but the inverse our logarithm. Meaning this is going to give us i times the argument of our complex number. Well. And you don't need to know anything more now because now we can go ahead and find out what for example um, negative 2 is here in the complex plane. Where is it located? For example here could be negative 2. Now we just need to find out the argument okay, of our complex number and also what the magnitude of this vector is and this is really easy to compute. So now we are going to go ahead and say we are going to have a complex number logarithm of negative b. Let's go for negative b. This is just random arbitrary number. Okay, We want b to be positive otherwise it would be just a positive uh, argument here Okay, if b were negative for example. Also we want it to be non-zero or b just as a few restrictions. And now we are going to take a look what the magnitude is at first. So the magnitude of our um, negative b, okay, for, for example negative 2, is just the distance between 0 and our negative 2. This is, in case, just our um, absolute value of our number that we are having. So absolute value of negative b, in case b is positive, is just going to give us b overall. Okay, so this is going to give us the logarithm of b plus i times our argument. This is the angle being enclosed by our complex vector, so this thing right here and our x-axis. If we were to draw this vector into here, what is the angle going to be? I mean if we have this angle it's going to be pi over 2, oh, so this angle is going to be pi. 
So once around is going to give us pi. But this is not the end of the story because complex numbers have the weird property that they can be multivalued, meaning we can go around once more. So if we go around once more, we are going to get two pi up until here. And once again, it's going to give us three pi. So we can also go a step further and say another angle, which is going to get us to our negative two and negative b, is going to be three pi. And we can proceed with this process. We can also say this is going to be five pi or seven pi, etc. But we can also go another way around because we can say, okay, why go in the counterclockwise direction when we go in the uh, when we can go in the clockwise direction. Meaning what we can do, we can say, okay, if we go negative pi in this direction, we are also going to land at negative two or negative three pi or negative five pi. Okay, so how can we formulate this into mathematical terms? What we are going to have is we are going to have some multiple of pi in some way, but those are always odd numbers, be it negative or positive. And odd numbers can be defined as being 2k plus one of the form 2k plus one where k is element of the positive or negative integers. And this right here is the logarithm of a negative number. This is how it's defined. And if we only were to consider the principal branch, meaning if we only were to go into the counterclockwise direction once and land it there, this is going to be the main result that you should take with you. This is just a single valued result. And it's going to lead to i times pa on this side. And that's basically it. Okay, because if we just go once in this direction, then our k is going to be equal to zero, meaning it's just one times pi. And if we were to denote it um, in the way that we have only the principal branch, this is what we call the principal branch, we are going to make a capital L out of it. So the capital, so the principal logarithm, this is what it's called. Okay, now we are going to take a look at what the logarithm of a negative base and a negative argument is going to be and it's really easy. Okay, if we were to take a look at this example, for example yet again, if we have the logarithm to the base negative 2 of negative 5, we are going to get the natural log of negative 5 over the natural log of negative 2. Now we can just use our sexy formula that, that we have here, be it on the principal branch or not, and plug the information into here. Meaning our raw logarithm of negative 5 by this definition is going to be the logarithm of 5 plus i times 2k plus 1 pi divided by, and now just the logarithm of 2 plus i times, and now just to be safe, we are also going to use k here, k plus 1 times pi. To be honest, I'm not certain if you can use a different running index here because I suppose um, you actually can, so call this r instead of k, because on the one hand you can go around in this direction, for example, to land at negative 5, and on the other hand you could go in this direction, for example, to land at negative 2, and you can do a few um, runarounds like this. So I suppose you can make a change of index and say this is not k, this is r, p, s, whatsoever, out of the positive and negative integers, but I don't want to place my hand into the fire, okay, for, for this argument. You can uh, dis discuss it down there. In the, um, in the comments. Other than that, this is a result that you can remember. Okay, so just this up here is the main result and then you can plug this definition into some logarithm of negative base and a negative argument and hence you are done. And this basically concludes the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, make a mention, and like if you want to support the channel a bit more. Buy those teachers, I create a support channel on Patreon. Up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. It's still early in the morning, it's somewhat, um, I don't know, 8 in the morning. I'm still kind of tired, but I felt like creating a video. Up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Ciao!